Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Jose Pila. I am your host with CVD Brief. And uh, I actually have a comment to make. I, I made I on LinkedIn earlier today, somebody mentioned, hey, why did you start a podcast about CBD? And uh, we actually didn't. We didn't start a podcast about CBD brief or about CBD, the marijuana, you know. So it's actually CV with two V's and it's a military connotation to a civilian CV, you know, so that's what we call it CVD brief. We're debriefing the civilians about, you know, military lifestyle or, you know, whatever um, lingo that veterans use or military uses. So that's why. And um, just want to say welcome again. Thank, thank you for joining us on this evening. We are on every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And uh, with that, I want to introduce our guest today, Pedro De Leon, uh, one of my best friends and also my business partner. What's going on, everyone? <laughs> uh, it's every, so I want to say vote for Pedro because everyone always wants to jump in and, and beat me to it. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Cool. Thank you for having the show. This is super exciting. Um, you know, we we've been working together, putting projects together. You know, and finally, um, this is one of the projects I haven't been on yet until now. No, so. the uh, when we made the switch from the podcast we used to own, or we still do, but uh, that we used to produce the meal with the vet. We made the switch. Yeah. When we got partnered up with All Access Broadcasting, and you haven't experienced All Access Broadcasting. I know, so this is my first time. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. I love the studio. I love the studio. So Yeah, yeah. no, I, I do too, man. I yeah. think it was a really, really good partnership and a good shift for for Ten Hud and what we're doing and exactly. trying to get the, the veteran story and amplifying that veteran voice, which is actually All Access Broadcasting's tagline. It's amplifying voices amplifying yeah so it fits perfectly with ours which is yeah. uh, you know really distributing or amplifying that veteran voice that, so that more people get to hear the veteran story exactly so that's why cvd brief you know debriefing civilians to understand uh what veterans go through and also you know the culture is different you know so i think that's it's good that we're doing this because we have to not only explain about the challenges but also the successes that happens, you know, with veterans, you know, um, yeah. you know, transition has been difficult for many of us, you know. You know, uh, like when I, how I started the show, it's funny because uh, Rob, a, a really good friend of mine, who I used to, uh, he used to be my boss. Yeah. Um, he, he messaged me, hey, why are you doing a, a, a <laughs> podcast about CBD? I was like, no, it's not. But I guess why, I guess, I, I get why people would think that it's yeah. CBD because if you say real quick, it's CBD, yeah, and then brief. So it's yeah, CBD brief. It. Yeah, but Rob, I know that you're watching, so it's it is not about CBD. It's civilian mm -hmm. or veterans debriefing civilians. Yeah, exactly, CBD so. brief. You get tongue tied with that. Yeah, definitely. I know people ask me like, what was CBD? I'm like, no, 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 no. CV civilian. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, but because we are. We are veteran podcast. We and we want to amplify that veteran voice. Yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about yours, man. I, I know it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And where to start? Our uh, audience should know it. Uh, where I start? So, um, I'm a rich. Yet start from the Bronx. From the Bronx. Because you're you're, <laughs> Jenny, know, you're Jenny might, from the block. Dude. No, no, I'm not. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Actually, you know, I, I'm originally, I was born in New Jersey. My folks moved to, to the Bronx when I was five years old, um, moving into the mini, mini projects, you know, and Ryan, <laughs> so um, grew up there, went to high school, you know, um, the environment that I grew in was very different, um, starting from middle school, you know, metal detectors. And I like to share this because a lot of people that I know in California, that have not experienced that what, what I experienced, you know, and a lot of friends that I have back home, back in back in New York. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, most of them growing up in East LA. Would, would <laughs> well, I don't know much about East LA. Yeah, the uh, metal detector thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, um, you know, it just from there, I you know went to college for a year. I was like, this is not for me. Um, but it was very difficult, you know, being. Wait, you you did college. Yeah, uh, for about a year. About right? a year. Yeah, before I joined the military. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I remember one of the stories that you told me. Um, 
weren't you in class when the whole September 11th? Oh yeah, September 11th. Thank you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I actually were in the Bronx Community College at that time when the whole 9/11 happened, and you know what was crazy mm -hmm. is that. You can talk to me. You don't have to yeah. talk to them, dude. You can oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you want me to give you? Okay. Yeah. No, but what I actually, what's, um, I remember that day it was a music class, and um, the teacher never gave us a break. But that day, she, everyone was feeling like lethargic, like tired, like weird, you know, and the teacher was like, hey, you know, I just don't feel well right now. And let's take a break. So we took the break, you know, and then when we step out of the classroom and our, the, the actual building was kind of sitting on top of like a hill yeah. and we saw this huge smoke and it was like wondering, what, what is that? You know, so everyone was just kind of wondering and two, yeah. like a minute later and everybody was getting a call. Do you know what's, what's really interesting is that uh, like people telling their story of what happened, yeah. what they were doing during 9-11, during that exact time, um, it is so impactful on and in embedded in people's memory that they could tell you a lot of the times what the smell was like that day or yeah. you know vivid details of that exact hour of what they were doing when they discovered that um the towers were down so it's it's fun yeah. i mentioned it because it's funny how you were you know you, you yeah i remember you remember your emotions yeah. you know you're feeling yeah. lethargic you, you know yeah it's uh when there's an emotional connection your brain tends to remember these things because it's different mm -hmm. you know versus like the just monotone stuff you don't remember that well like like certain subjects or whatever you know yeah. but um yeah that, and i and i know a lot of friends back home they will tell me hey you know i still remember that day you know so it's uh you know so i experienced that um about a year later two no two years later that's oh, well, yeah but Going going back to that that day, like yeah. you mentioned that you were feeling tired, but you you hadn't found out. You just saw a puff of smoke, right? You didn't. Yeah. So that's 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 very interesting. Um, no, we didn't know nothing about it. We as soon as we stepped out, we saw the the, the smoke, but everyone was feeling weird though, because everyone was like, "Yeah, well, I feel weird too." You know, like some you know some some students were saying that. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else was feeling weird. So you share share your you know share your thoughts. On the comments, but I know that that day. Yeah, why, why are you doing my job, man? No, I'm sorry, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop uh, doing my job. I do it is a lot. You know, we just go back and forth. We always cut each other off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that that would be really interesting. Thank you for bringing yeah. that up. I, I would like to know what people's uh, you know reactions or emotions. Mostly, what if you can remember more specific details of you know what the smell was like that day what you know what your emotional state was before you even found out so that would be yeah because it, it's really interesting how the psyche works and how it stores that much memory when yeah. it's that impactful as you mentioned so. yeah definitely yeah so um it was uh i, I and i do remember all the details like how to how to wait for the bus just to get home and there was like no bus around and everything so yeah no really yeah <laughs> Yeah, so, it was, so how was that when you found out that? Yeah, it was it was crazy. Like everyone was, you know, looking at everyone panicking, and then you like figured out how to get home, and you're panicking too. Like, what's going on? Yeah, the the yeah. reason why I asked is because you were so close to to the towers. I mean, you were in the Bronx at, at that time. Um, yeah. I was like maybe about five to six hundred miles away. I was in North Carolina yeah. uh, when when the towers went down. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting for hearing from somebody that yeah. you know that close to to the towers and seeing actual yeah. smoke and because I I caught it on the news. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I honestly I was so so young man and I um I didn't pay attention much at school especially yeah. in economics. So if they did talk about the uh, the financial impact that these twin towers had, I didn't pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. So when they went down, I was like, "What towers? What is that?" trade center yeah I, didn't, I had no idea what the trade center was but i i yeah. knew that it was um it was a big deal because a lot of people were like oh my god we've just been attacked yeah but you you were you were still you were in right at that yeah time. I was yeah in. yeah you was in yeah, okay yeah and, um you know for i know that a couple friends i have a couple friends that actually were in manhattan when that whole thing happened and they started they saw the the actual you know plane going towards the towers you know so that was that was more of a impactful moment for them but so, you 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 took that I, I guess that day you took it as a catalyst to 
to enlist, right? Yeah, I actually did. Yeah, yeah. No, I, that, that was like one of my first stepping st- step in, steps for me for actually to say I want to join the military because of what's been going on, you know. So what happened? Why? Why did you decide to do that? Well, at first I was um, in the mindset of joining the military. And when but you were already in college. Why? You uh, didn't like college? Or no, it was just not my thing. <laughs> it was not my thing, you know. So at that time, it wasn't my thing. And, and you know me, like I'm always thinking about business. And at the time, I was thinking about business, th- trying to invent things and build things, you know, whatever. So, um, but anyways, from there, th- that's one of the that was one of the main reasons for me to join, you know. Um, and then also to get out of the out of the Bronx. <laughs> Well, since yeah. I think the, the statute of limitations has passed, because yeah. I, I remember you telling me that, uh, like, you, you were in some some stupid shit no, <laughs> during yeah. that time. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. So don't worry, because yeah, yeah. the statute of limitations <laughs> has already passed. So anyone, any airbags that you stole that, from that time. Oh, this guy's making up things now. They're trying to get me in trouble. Then I told you, of- I'm telling you that the statute of limitations <laughs> has passed, bro. So it, it doesn't really matter. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's like this guy. 20 years ago. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm omitting that part right now. Um, so I'm not. So uh, yeah, that's 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 that was my story, you know. And then one of the reasons why I joined, you know. What was the other reasons? So another reason is, you know, wanted to just kind of explore it. I wanted to just go out there. I, you know, I had the mentality that there's, there was, you know, growing up, I had uh, like a mentor through the Boys and Girls Club, and he always told me like, there's a world outside from where you at, you know, and and that really impacted me to explore more you know that's the reason why i chose the military actually i think you should because um I, I remember a, a couple of times you and i have hung out and uh um you, you mentioned sometimes or a lot of the times that you credit a lot of your success a lot of your your mental state mm-hmm. joining the military um up, obtaining your bachelor's getting into entrepreneurship you attested to that mentor so you probably should shut it out yeah, definitely. So yeah, and I, I want to say you know, growing up, uh, Mark, Marcus E. e Sharp, uh, I looked him up on LinkedIn, and I, I a few years ago, and I told him thank you so much for for making an impact in my life because huh. I I would have went through the through the wrong path, right? What um, was that wrong path? Yeah, you know, so no, what was it? what was that wrong path? Is just like you know, being on the streets and just not stealing airbags. No, <laughs> stealing airbags like it's crazy. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Um, yeah. No, but that's. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a means to to an end during that during that time, and uh, yeah. that, that's that's the thing is that one of the things that we're trying to do here at CVD Brief is break down those those even many stories of what led yeah, you of to course. this particular path, and yeah, and it isn't anything to 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 be ashamed of because no, no, no. It, it's made you who you are and. I know that I joke about it, but you did steal. <laughs> you did steal fucking airbags, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, so yeah. <laughs> but, hey, I love don't, don't don't tell me shit. If if we're gonna be drunk, don't yeah. tell me shit, dude. Yeah, okay. Because I'll bring it up on CBD. <laughs> <laughs> Got me. Got him. Yeah. No, but it's yeah. you know it's one of those things. And that, yeah, and that's that's the thing you know like having having that actual you know mentor through the process of 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 um, understanding you know what is that having clarity of what I wanted to do when I was growing up you know it's it's it was really important for me you know um, so that that really helped me he actually helped me a lot to understand things differently. What's very really cool about it is that he was actually uh, he's an army veteran himself, mm-hmm. and then he got and cool. then. And then he got uh, picked up. He master's degree at Stanford, so he went to ca- moved out of here in California. Oh, really? Yeah, to Stanford. to get his to get his uh, master's in psychology, and then um, he moved up. I think he's in Seattle right now, something like that. You know, so but yeah, the, so I really take that. You know, I give a lot of them. I got the mentors through the journey. I give you guys. Thank you so much for for being there. You know, because it, it helps me to where I'm at now. You know, and that's what we we want to do. We want to give. Um, help others to succeed, to find that clarity, to to find that value. Um, well, what, um, you know. And and I well, I know that I get it um, because yeah. I live I live and breathe Ten Hut and what our mission is. And, yeah. You know um, that no bullshit mentality help help those mm-hmm. help those who want to help themselves. So ultimately, they could help yeah. others. You know. Um, yeah. But why do you think it makes you the right person? 
to to do it and then i know why but yeah well so here's the thing i actually um been through the journey been through the journey of picking myself up to where i was at where where i wanted to be i mean the challenges the struggles um you know, it is a big struggle that I had when I was growing up, you know, just being bullied. And I know you mentioned about that, you know, last show. But and then from there, it's just transitioning out of the military and it's just pushing myself to the next level. And that's that's what I've, you know, been putting a lot of effort and whatever I've learned, I teach it, you know, and I help what others. Was, yeah. What was, and I mean, in the last the last decade that I've known you, mm-hmm. I, I I mean, I've shared that struggle with you on some of it. Yeah. But um, before then, I don't. I mean, we've talked we talked about that struggle. Yeah. But um, yeah, let's let's share a little bit about that struggle before the military, during the military. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's just uh, so I want to say uh, before the military, definitely, it's just. Uh, I was I was like more of the 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 outcast. I wasn't like a cool kid, you know. When you know growing up, I was in you know from from middle from middle school to high school, and you know it's it, there was a lot of a belief about myself that I didn't value, you know. And there was a lot of things that I I felt like I couldn't be part of a, a group or something, you know. Yeah. You know, so you know what I mean. Like, and so I had that uh, that belief of myself. And then when I joined the military, I kind of it really helped me a lot to 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 have you know take out that inner leadership that I that I've learned you know yeah. that I, I was I, apparently inside of me you know that inner leadership I know helping others you know that helping others it, so it was it was an apparently it was you I yeah. mean you do have tons of leadership you know yeah. abilities um, I've experienced right, thank it. you yeah. yeah yeah thank you man yeah appreciate it. <laughs> Well, I've, I've known you for a really long time, and I know that um, I wouldn't have joined the team yeah. or started a business with you if I didn't see that we can. Yeah, let's talk about business. No, <laughs> no, dude. I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. One one of the things is that we're trying to do is, um, you know, tell that veteran story so that it it resonates with our audience, either yeah. civilians and. Um, veterans especially going through the struggle right right like transitioning transitioning from the civilian life into military you know what drives us to get there yeah what drives us to to make that that uh, selfless decision to join the military yeah um, a lot of it is some of us make it selfish selfishly yeah um, but ultimately we we stay in we, we endure we mm-hmm. selflessly yeah and you, you know, one of the things that I that, and it's something I think we brought we talked about this before is that you know a lot of a lot of us join the military at a you know obviously a young age. You know, I joined when I was nineteen. Some of us joined at seventeen, and then when you, especially if you spend a lot of years in the military, you still have that mindset of who you were before you joined. And then even though you you know at a young age you're given this big responsibility and everything, but as soon as you step out of that structure, then it's like okay, who am I? What is my what is who is my, my identity? And that's one of the things that I had issues coming out of the military, knowing who I who who really am. You know, um, I was that sergeant. You know, that that took care of soldiers, and then on top of that, I actually um, you know in charge of so much so much equipment, blah blah blah, and everything. And 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 I felt empty inside because I said, "What well, I fulfilled a lot of things in the military, but as soon as it coming out, I didn't feel like I was able to fulfill anything in the civilian life." outside even though like in my mindset at the time i was thinking like all right i'm gonna go to school because that's something that i was embedded since i was a kid go go to college you can get a yeah. uh, degree and then and then you know get a, a, a job but it, deep inside me and i was like this is not what's that is not my route at that time you know um but then you know then you start i started having challenges with myself as like i need this to support myself or my family and my family because you know um Financially, I wasn't able to. I wasn't having a foundation, you know. Because in the military, we our mission is to get whatever the company asks us to do, right? And and then the money come in. Like the following month, you know, money's gonna be there. And like what we talked about yesterday, right? Like, you yeah. know, you got a Private Joe spending so much money on uh, buying a new car, or his paycheck is gone, but he knows he's gonna get another paycheck, 
you know? Yeah, yeah there, you, you do have a sense of, of security, especially because um, if you live in the in the barracks, yeah. you have, you know, three hots and a cot, you know? Yeah. You, you're waking up, you go to chow. Uh, you Before you go to bed, you got chow. Mm -hmm. And even if you want to go go out and 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 party and mm -hmm. things like that you you have somebody that will take care of you right until right. the next next paycheck comes in absolutely so yeah. um yeah I, yeah I get it you know so that, that's identity you know finding your, knowing your own value so it's just one of the the, the struggles that i was having you yeah. know yeah especially and i know that uh we've shared this a lot and I know that our our stores is somewhat s similar yeah. transitioning out and stuff like that, but I happen to believe that yours was a lot tougher than than mine, mm -hmm. just because you had two other individuals that you had to account for. Yeah, I just had myself, and if I got lost or if I woke up on a at a park bench or if I woke up at somewhere that I just didn't recognize yeah. from being completely uh, drugged out or um, drunk. Mm -hmm. It was just me that I had to take care of. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but you, you had your your wife and your kid to mm -hmm. to account for that. Yeah, it must have been a lot. Yeah, you know, difficult, more difficult than. Yeah, I so I want to say that. So my wife is a vet, you know, and when we got out of the military, when I got out of the military, um, she got out before I did. Um, my father-in-law passed away, you know. And she was mentally checked out and, you know, a daughter at the time, Jasmine, she was only two. Um, you know, it was like looking at what, you know, what I'm going to do. Like, she's not responding well and I got to take my daughter. And, and I understand that because she was, that's her dad. You know, she was really, con she's connected to him, you know. So um, we didn't have any clarity. It's just like I was in survival mode at that time. You know yeah. what are we doing, yeah. and we we were couch surfing at the at the time, and then trying to figure it out how to. Still play. in the military. This is when after the military. This is after right right when I ETS when I just oh I, out you know. of active duty because yeah, then duty. you decided to do reserves. yeah then I went to the reserves yeah 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 so damn dude and that I I remember you telling me that um there were certain decisions in your life that you had to put on hold because of. The struggles that you went through like i know that you wanted to go um you had an opportunity to go sf or work with um, the special yeah. operations yeah and that didn't happen because you had to put your family before before that because of the struggles you, your wife has already had already mentally checked out yeah and uh so tell me about that yeah definitely so you know right before the military uh I was injured, so I was in the Wounded Transition Battalion, yeah. Bravo Company at that time, and it was Gulf Barracks. And, you know, I was looking to Which get, isn't a bad, bad yeah. place to be in no. if you're at Schofield <laughs> uh, in uh, Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> but yeah. if, you, if you think your your life is shit when you're in in Schofield Barracks, then you're, you're, not, you're doing pretty bad. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 That, that's why I emphasize, because it's Schofield Barracks. Yeah. And you still feel like you're off kinds of messed up so yeah you know so you know at that time i was there were some things that was happening but um in the transition we decided to move out out of the military and just say you know what let's just go out, away from active duty and a lot of it had to do because you know uh my daughter i don't want her i didn't want her to be missing out on me a lot you know and my you know donia was like at the time she was like i'm ready to go to school i want to your do wife yeah. yeah and my wife you know so um, you know, but then it hit us hard. As soon as we transitioned, that's when the whole thing started happening and you know, our dad situation was going on, you know, and um, just making those decisions, a lot of things that I was, you know, I was given an opportunity to go overseas as a contractor to as well. Mm. Um, but I didn't want, I didn't feel comfortable of leaving my family to where fend for themselves, especially that they, they weren't, uh, you know, she wasn't ready to just kind of handle the, me being away, you know, yeah. uh, so, because of that situation where her dad, you know, she needed that help. So I was there and, and I, I really like, you know, in the military, we tend to put ourselves last because we always thinking about our, our, our soldiers. Yeah, right? So that was a mentality that I was putting her first and my kid, you know, yeah. and I was putting myself last. And that, yeah. and that's exactly the mentality that a lot of the vets have is, is that, that altruistic mentality of take care of others. So that, yeah. you know, yeah, um, of course. we'll, we always come second. Yeah. 
Um, but it's it's difficult to me- to mention that the, the, all of those struggles that you went through while transitioning out of the military, and I'm sure a lot of our some of our audience would would resonate with it. Is yeah. I know that my struggle was difficult, but I cannot begin to imagine if I had to take care of somebody, mm-hmm. and because the uh, the daily decisions that I made while going through my my struggle, it was just me. Mm-hmm. I chose to to get completely blitzed out of my mind every single day, yeah. um, and I had zero care mm-hmm. about anyone else. You know, I don't know if my situation would have been worse if I had to take care of some, let alone two other individuals, Mm -hmm. to account for. I I can't begin to imagine what those decisions must have been like, man. You know, I I do want to say, and this is what I mentioned to her, I said, like, at that time, it it was a battle between what I wanted to achieve versus taking care, having that foundation for the family. And it was very difficult for me because I was like, I, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's, and, and in my mind, I was like, the route that I'm taking to to do with, with um, you know, to take care of them, everybody was saying like, oh yeah, you know, your job now is to take care of them and and and, and provide for them. And in my mind, I was like, I, I know Danya is able to provide, but her focus was only to take care of the kids, you know? And, and I know this, this question might be difficult to answer, but, mm-hmm. um, and you don't have to, but uh, did you ever think that there might have been a, a different option? Did you ever question yourself and say, fuck, I can't do this? Several times, man. Several times. Yeah. Um, so this is what I told her about, you know, because I like to communicate with my wife, like things that would happen going through my head at a time. Because it got to a point where I was like, I felt like, like I was drowning. Yeah. You know, I was just drowning. I don't know what to do. You know. Um, and every single day, that I thought about like if I ever take this decision to to the extreme measures, then what's gonna happen to my family? Yeah. And that what kept me moving forward. You know. And it's and it's one of the the biggest things that I I admire about you is that uh, I don't think I've ever heard you say that you um, you masked any of it mm-hmm. with like I did I, and like I mentioned I didn't have anyone to, to account for so I I just I masked everything with alcohol and and painkillers yeah. and I've never heard you say that you've uh, took on something to mask it. So, I mean, I, I mean, alcohol was one of those. <laughs> it definitely was. <laughs> but yeah. it, 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 I don't know if it had ever gotten, and, and I know, because I've, I mean, I've, yeah. you know, we, yeah. we party together sometimes, yeah. um, way back in the day, much younger, healthier knees, healthier back days. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. man, my back. <laughs> That's why I fidget a lot. Yeah, That's what I was on moon room forward right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think I've ever heard you say one your your emotional maturity is beyond mine Mm. and i don't think i've ever heard you say i couldn't quit so Mm. i need because it so i required help yeah on anything any substance yeah there's sometimes that anyone would need Mm. an escape every now and then but i don't think you utilize any substance to escape it every day you know I used to see my dad a lot drink, and I used to think to myself, like, I always saw that battle with my mom and my dad always arguing with each other because of what used to happen a lot, and then that, it to me, but, I was like, I'd never going through that, you know. But it, and you know what, it's, because uh, I know your your parents too, but it's, it's interesting that, because you, your dad suffers from P- PTSD, he does, uh, yeah. serving in the military in Guatemala. Yeah. Um, and he masked it through alcohol. So I, I don't know if that was the reason why you, you just dealt with it. I did. I dealt with <laughs> it. 
that's why I like I you know in the past I used to bottle things a lot. Yeah. And then when I used to like explode, I just like you know, well you know I just drank a lot and then we go with the wor worst hangover ever. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but in the and then I've seen you that. And then the next couple of days, you you buckle down and you say, "Okay, I'm not letting get, let this get a hold of me." Mm -hmm. And you come up with that's, with something. I, you know, that's true, man. You know, to, to, to think about that, I've I've been like that. Like I I I crash really bad, and then a couple of days later, I just pick myself back up, and then yeah, you know, <laughs> I've, I've been on that roller coaster ride with you, bro. <laughs> it's like, all right, drinking day, and we we fall really hard, but. Yeah. I, I've used it. I've used that as an example to to propel myself forward. Yeah. Um, watching you throughout the years, um, through that roller coaster ride, where yeah, sometimes you just you got to give yourself a break and just let it take over. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to. No, just that's just one of the coping mechanisms that, that our mentality and our body does, and yeah. we yeah. we crash. Um, yeah. But it's what you do with that crash that that defines us. Either you allow it, which you do every single time, is you allow it to propel you forward, mm -hmm. or you buckle down and you say, "Fuck this shit, I'm I'm going to make it." Mm -hmm. And I've I've gathered that mentality from you for the a long, long time. So I learned it. <laughs> <laughs> I learned it. Yes, I taught you something. No, just, <laughs> just kidding, yeah. bro. I I no. have. Over eight years or no closer to 10 years of um, college experience through my master's and everything. I don't think I've ever learned that through a, a master's course or yeah. now I my PhD. Yeah. They wouldn't teach you that shit, dude. Yeah. Well, yeah so, definitely. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Life experience teach you a lot, you know. You know, and that's one thing that I, that I have to give myself credit is that I've never took, taken myself too extreme to kind of go down the rabbit hole you know yeah. and but i don't i don't see it that way you do i do you know i i don't see it that way um and that's something i have to work on yeah. you know but yeah it, it isn't all um sorrow and you know no, no, no. shitty ass transition of course um not. i mean now you we together own um a company or mm -hmm. two companies that have several projects within those companies, yeah. like this podcast, and um, yeah, yeah, and now we have a school, yeah. uh, school program, the entrepreneurship course that we started, which just got approved by the VA. Which yeah, we were really excited about. Yeah, um, so it's entrepreneurship in where is it? So it's going to be in Irvine. So we started in Irvine, and uh, eventually we're going to start branching out onto Los Angeles, yeah. and then it, this the might look like a plug-in, but it's not. A, it's it's a plug-in. It's totally a plug-in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I have to say that this is for veterans. Anyone, like seriously, you know, you're going to go through challenges. You're going to go through a lot of headaches. You're going to go through so much in life that you know. I I, I want to say so when. I was staying at your house, remember? I was staying for almost a year. And I'm gonna say this, and this is, I, I wanna share this because I think it's important to to understand, like no matter how, I felt like the the universe was like shitting on me, and I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm supposed to. Uh, no, we yeah, just put it yeah. in place. I've been cussing my okay. ass off. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and then I felt like I got skull dragged and, and, and because I was looking to achieve something with my life. And, and then things didn't work, pan out, staying with you. And then one day, you told me, I remember, like, dude, I'm not going to tell you to stop drinking, but um, one day you're going to wake up and you're going to say, I got to stop this. Oh, yeah. And it happened. You probably don't remember because you were probably, you know, <laughs> <You're> drunk. <too. laughs> and then I remember, you know, uh, I said, I need to shift my life because I said, I'm tired of living like this. This is not who I am. This is not what I did in the military. I, I, I train a lot of people. I move forward. I encourage others to grow. And I was like, I have to do something for myself outside. And that energy that I say, man, screw that. I don't, I'm, I'm away. So I'm away from the problems. I'm, I'm, a, I'm away from, I like going towards things that I, I want to achieve. And that's why I kept reminding myself. And it's, and it's actually that, that no bullshit mentality of, 
no, I got to buckle down. This is I am not I'm not a victim. I'm a product of my own decisions. Yeah, and I got to keep moving forward. Just yeah. keep moving forward. And and um, I mean I I attest this to a, a book I just read, and we were listening to it the other day. The uh, David Goggins David can't Goggins. yeah can't hurt me. Yeah. Um, if David Goggins ever hears this, I'm promoting your book like there's no tomorrow, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh no it's just it's that no bullshit mentality no one's you we can't have that that victim mentality yeah and the the minute that you start getting blaming other people for your current situation is you, you've lost yeah you know and um it, it, that's something that i i, I like to sh you know talk to other veterans and the way that we've been helping is like start shifting that because the more you blame others or the, the situation you're in the more you're going to embed program your mind to where it's going to continue happening versus what can you achieve let's keep pushing that you know yeah and and regardless of what um and it's and it's funny because i have this discussion with people all the time like oh what 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 is your pol political view what is your your religious stance what like it doesn't matter because and I say that be because a lot of people use that as a platform uh, mm -hmm. and a soapbox to to start victimizing themselves and other people. No, yeah. you should blame the the system for for a lack of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Is there a lack of opportunities in certain? I don't know. I, I've have I experienced uh, certain challenges because of my race, probably. Yeah. But I damn it, Supai, <laughs> freaking. Uh, but I don't. I don't have that victim mentality to say, oh, I'm, I'm going to buckle down and say, okay, I'm not in the, my current situation or in the situation that I want to be in because of someone else. Yeah, yeah. Like you got you to gotta power through that stuff and, and get out of that victim, victim mentality. Uh, throughout my, my pro process of transitioning and uh, achieving things that I wanted to achieve in my life, I put blinders. And I really didn't care for what others were saying like you can't do this because of this or you have no experience or the, the world it's you know not the world but like the system is, is holding you down i pulled the blinders and i just blocked that and then i kept moving forward and i just kept moving forward and i start you know i, I gave myself narrow myself enough to where i was just mainly focused to what i wanted to get yeah that's you why know? i mean here in the in this podcast we don't share political views no. Um, we don't share religious affiliations. We're a secular um, podcast organization because of those blinders that you, that you mm -hmm. mentioned. It's just moving forward. We are we don't see color. We don't see race. We don't see gender. We don't see anything like that. Nope. We just see the value of the character mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the passion in people. If you mm -hmm. are passionate in what you want to do, if you are driven... Um, you'll you'll reach whatever it is that you want to reach because you won't see anything like that and you won't see that victim mentality you won't see you might reach some barriers but i guarantee you that if you reach that barrier and you keep pounding on that barrier it's going to weaken mm -hmm. and one one of those days you're going to take that run running start into that barrier and it will break yeah, i absolutely. guarantee it but if you got to you got to continue to push forward and I don't know that it's it's worked for me so far to have the no victim mentality and and yeah. yeah do I have bad days I suffer from depression all the time I have my good days my bad days yeah. my worst days but I know that if I can't get up in the morning because of my depression I know that tomorrow will be a better day or tomorrow might get better yeah but we gotta drive forward man yeah that's the thing you know moving forward that was my uh company model when i was in basic training always <laughs> forward so i just keep moving forward always forward you know i think ours was kill 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah i think it was yeah <laughs> definitely but uh yeah you know absolutely right and that's one thing that i we we love to teach others right yeah My okay let's get you out of that mindset let's keep moving forward let's what is it you want what let's make that clarity for you your why you know and then the how happens later on and you know the why you know so. yeah but uh, and like you mentioned earlier you it one day it'll click on you and that that passion is going to f like fuel you so bad that y you want to y you want to figure out what your why is and that passion is going to drive you forward but yeah. it's it's going to 
Uh, like for me, so a lot of the times when, especially when I, on my down days, I I get angry, mm-hmm. not at myself, just at the situation. Like, <laughs> damn it, these these chemical reactions that are happening inside <laughs> my body. Why is it yeah. uh, putting me down? But I know that if I keep p- pushing forward, it's yeah. going to change. Yeah, you know. So absolutely, it's that's one of the things that I and unfortunately we can't talk anymore. Yeah, <laughs> because. I, I'm sure our audience are getting bored. <laughs> no, but it's 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 the end of our show, and hopefully we can have Pedro back yeah. so that we can continue our conversation this, with this motherfucker. I uh, I always <laughs> I can talk with him forever. Um, him and I had uh, had a long, long talk yesterday, and we had to stop because we had to sleep. <laughs> yeah, like, we so- don't. No one needs sleep. We yeah, sleep in one. I had to get up early. I had to get up early in the morning. So yeah. No, but it, yeah. It, we would definitely love to have you back, dude, and continue on with yeah. our, the conversation. We would love to hear your transitioning story. I've heard it. I've I've been in it. Um, yeah. For, so for reals. But I I mean anything you want to leave our audience with? Yeah, you know, that's a lot. But I actually, time is limited right now. So I definitely want to say that you know, um, no matter what you're going through in life. Just keep pushing forward, keep moving forward. Reach out to us. We can give you some ideas and or, or some you know motivation. And motivation is only works a little bit. You got to build that discipline, and we can help you build that discipline. And and I believe that's why we started Ten Hut. You know. Yeah, yeah. and uh, dude, it's a good thing that you talk about discipline because I, I know that my 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 friends, my my family, uh, my fiance would tell you that I I do have a lot of discipline. I am very. Um, clean and, and disciplined in how I live and how I and how I act and it's okay to lose that discipline from time to time it is how you come out of the how do you how you come out of it that that builds up that that strength and that further life discipline I guess yeah because I I, I used to put myself down for you know oh man I, I used to work out twice a day and Mm -hmm. you know i used to have the discipline to work out and and then i i haven't worked out in two months and now i don't have any discipline no that's that's not it some a lot of the times is you know we just have to keep moving forward like you mentioned yeah always but yeah all right (laughs) sorry i am uh uh, we're gonna have to take off and hopefully you can log on to our next show every Wednesday at 7 p.m. so that uh, we can share the veteran story and then amplify those voices. All right. Thank you, Pedro. All right. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks, everyone. See you.